When it comes to video games, I don't think it's as simple as just slapping a big shiny sticker on your favorite one and saying, this is the best game of the year, it made me cream. <laughs> In the past, I talked about the Oscars and how with movies, it's a little easier to pick the best movie of the year when a movie is only an hour and a half long. That's a pretty short buy-in for most critics and general consumers to go and watch and form an opinion. But video games, I mean, <laughs> one of the games in the game of the year category is literally an 80 hour game. You're telling me that most people voting for the game of the year this year have completed metaphor re Fantasio? Re I don't think so. What I'm saying is it's almost impossible to actually select the best game of the year. Impossible for most people. But not me, because the last three years, I successfully predicted the winner of the Game Awards right here on this channel. In these videos, I bought a hot streak. Last year, I went for the Jordan 3 Pete, and this year, I'm going for a repeat of four. The Game Awards, being the Game Awards, is once again riddled in controversy because they revealed the nominees today. And one of those nominees is Elden Ring. Yesterday, they updated their terms and service on the website to state that DLC is now allowed to run for game of the year. Oh, so Elden Ring's winning again? Is that what you're saying? It's not charming, you know, to win two years in a row and brag about it. Get to four and then let me know. <laughs> Just remember that our main six games of the year contestants are Astrobot, Bellatro, Black Myth, Wukong, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Metaphor Refantasio. Those nominees, they're gonna make voting in this thing a lot easier as we go along, and you'll see what I mean. Thank you. There's one thing Tiny Wood loves, and that's Black Friday, or just the whole month of November getting great deals on video games and tech and all kinds of things. But there's one place that doesn't need to give good Black Friday deals because Raycon gives a great deal every day of the week. But despite that, they're still doubling down on their discount and offering my viewers up to 30% off. That's right, 30% off. They've gone insane. <laughs> I'm so small. Raycon's everyday earbuds are a perfect gift either for yourself or someone that you love. Maybe if there's someone in your life that spends a lot of time at the gym, Gym and you want them to have great quality audio while they're pumping iron, you might want to consider getting their newest model of Raycons. This is what I use in the gym, and I can't live without them. Because the last thing I want is to be mid-rep on chest day, lose one of these suckers, and then the whole gym can hear my Taylor Swift blasting on the floor. Did I say Taylor Swift? I meant five-figure death punch. These new Raycons now have a 32-hour battery life and multi-point connectivity. I connected them to my Switch and my Steam Deck at the same time. Why? I don't really know, but it's cool that I could do it. <laughs> and I might be small, but even I can see a big offer when it's right in front of my face. Because Raycons, they're already half the price of other premium audio brands while offering the same quality. But with their new Black Friday deal, up to 30% off. So go to buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups to get up to 30% off store-wide. That's buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups up to 30% off store wide. You know what really giddies my goat being tiny wood? What's with Starbucks calling their coffees tall for the small? Grande, venti, ugh, you're so fancy with your six dollar burn ass coffee hot water. All right, All every right. year we have Bye. to vote on esports. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, I'm gonna go team liquid because I can make the most jokes about that name. Best esports athlete, <laughs> oh, I don't think it matters. Best esports game. Zach, could you do me a favor? Could you put best esports games from last year here? I'm pretty sure it's almost exactly the same as last year. I'm gonna go Valorant because it's the only one that I've played. Content creator of the year. Mmm. 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 Queso definitely has my vote. Most anticipated game. What is the award for? Yet the best marketing, I suppose? Let's not beat around the bush here. It's Grand Theft Auto 6. As much as I am excited for every single one of these games, no one's picking anything else. Best adaptation? I watched the Knuckles show. It sucked. I'm sorry. I've heard Arcane is sick, but I honestly feel like Fallout is going to take this category home. It's legitimately actually awesome. Surprisingly great. I really enjoyed it. The the sales numbers on Fallout games skyrocketed when this series came out. I think that's an absolute no-brainer. I would be shocked if that one doesn't win. Next, best multiplayer game. Bam! 
Maybe. It's got to be Mario Party Jamboree. I mean, what are we doing here? No, wait, hold up a minute. Hold up a minute. I just remembered there is a best family game category. And Nintendo always wins that category. And this year, Jamboree is in best family game. So I'm actually kind of thinking Black Ops and Helldivers 2 have the best chance here. I think I'm going to go Helldivers. Sometimes I do vote for my favorite and what I legitimately think is the best. And then other times I like to be right and I try and vote for the way I think Jeff Keighley's Game Awards is going to go. And I think with the impact Helldivers had and how fun of a multiplayer specifically experience it is, I think that's going to win. Also, it was great. I had a lot of fun playing it. Best sports racing. Oh, God. I have absolutely no opinion. I don't care. I honestly don't. I don't even want to vote. All right, here we are. Best family game. Now, don't get me wrong. I think a lot of families sat down together and they played Astro Bot together. I think that is a family activity. However, I have a hard time voting for single player experiences when it comes to best family game because I really like to think that it's a family family sitting down and playing a game together like everyone's getting to play and the only one here that actually has multiplayer i'm pretty sure is mario party jamboree i'm not sure about plucky squire but i think that's also a single player game all these are single player games mario party jamboree is the family game i hate to tell you best fighting game i have played dragon ball i haven't played tekken 8 i feel like if you're going with best fighting game like a pixel perfect this is a fighter to its core yeah i think you gotta go to tekken 8 best rpg here we are we're here, ladies and gentlemen. Remember earlier in the video when I said pay attention to the best games nominated for game of the year because it'll help reveal how broken this system is moving forward? The five nominees are Dragon's Dogma 2, Elden Ring, Final Fantasy, Like a Dragon, and Metaphor. Now, immediately, you can completely roll out, no matter what your opinion is on these, Dragon's Dogma 2 and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth because neither of those are nominated for game of the year and all the other three are so if one of those other two are a better rpg why is that rpg not in the running for game of the year and the other three are we're already going to have to have a game of the year discussion in this category because out of these three games i'm gonna have to pick which is the best rpg so that would be the best game of the year out of these three games since they're all rpgs rich player character customization and progression i don't like the way of defining it that way because I think Final Fantasy Rebirth is my favorite RPG of that list, but character customization isn't really there in Final Fantasy Rebirth. But if we want to talk character customization, it's El it's Elden Ring again. Or even Metaphor Fantasio. I mean, you can change up classes. I really just don't want to vote for Elden Ring again. I really don't know why they added that you can include DLC all of a sudden. I don't want to vote for Elden Ring. Yes, the game is sick. The game's a 10 out of 10 game. It's one of the best games ever and they released a $40 add-on pack that had hours of extra content, like 20, 40 hours of extra content. It's essentially a whole nother game. It's like a sequel to Elden Ring. It's awesome. So of course, yes, 10 out of 10. I also think, hands down, it's the best game out of these five. But it didn't come out this year. So I'm stuck. I don't know what to do because in my heart of hearts, I want to be right and I want to vote for the thing I think is going to win. The thing is, I think Elden Ring is going to freaking win again. It's like the election all over <laughs> I don't want it to win. I don't want this to happen again. I refuse to vote for Elden Ring. F you, Elden Ring. I'm so <laughs> Ignoring all of that, there's one more thing in the game awards that they consider, and it's not how good the game is compared to another game. It's the impact the game has. Something like Black Myth Wukong came out of nowhere, made a huge impact. 20 million sales. Because if 20 million players have played a game like Black Myth Wukong, and only 2 million have played a game like Final Fantasy, even if you want to nickel and dime and be like, oh, I think Final Fantasy is just a little better, it's going to be an upset if it wins because 20 million people are going to be like, oh my God, you didn't, p that game was so great. I didn't even play that game. You know what I mean? Oh, so all that said, I, I I think Elden Ring wins this category, but I refuse to vote for it. So I'm going to vote for Final Fantasy. All these years we've been doing game of the year. Now you're adding in that DLC is allowed on the year that Elden Ring puts out DLC. So essentially you, you just decided you wanted Elden Ring to win again. Do you just want controversy so that people watch the game awards, Jeff? Keely, is that what it is? Because this year was so quiet in gaming, you figured that people probably wouldn't tune in.
tune in. So you were like, what if I create my own controversy? Took a page out of, took, took a page out of Eric Bischoff's book, Controversy Creates Cash. Zach, put the book on the screen. Don't you dare cut this out. This is a niche thing for my wrestling fans. Here's another broken category. Best action adventure. Despite my feelings on Prince of Persia, Star Wars, and Legend of Zelda, they cannot win because if Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is a better action adventure game than the action adventure game Astro Bot, then why is Zelda not in game of the year? Am I sounding like a rick -a broken record? But regardless of any of that, I think Astro Bot absolutely was the best action adventure game of the year out of these five games. That game was 9 out of 10. It was an almost a perfect platformer. It borrowed elements from so many other great games. Obviously, a lot of Mario, but twisted it and put its own spin on it. And it was so much fun. I honestly do think that was the best one out of those. Not to breeze past Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This is a perfect place for me to say that I made a first impressions video for Zelda the day that it came out. How much I loved it and I gushed over it. Then I went on to finish it. And I didn't feel as strongly as I did by the time I got to the end of the game. It was not one of my favorite Zeldas by any means. It was definitely a middle of the road Zelda, but I enjoyed the concept. It just got a little repetitive. All right, best action game. I'm not even upset that I sound like a broken record. Only one of these action games are up for game of the year, and it's the 20 million copy selling absolute banger I played through the whole game in. Black Myth Wukong is sick and absolutely the best action game in this lineup, hands down, not a question. I don't even, don't even at me, I don't care. In my mind, the whole time, I was thinking to myself, this is game of the year, and it wasn't until I finished it and I took a couple of days and I calmed down. I saw the doctor because they did say if it lasted more, more than two days, I should see the doctor. And I said, Doc, I think I'm starting to calm down, as you can see. And I'm starting to think that maybe Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a better game, in my humble opinion. But it's very close, Doctor. Can I put my pants back on? And he said, yes, it looks a lot better now. Best VR AR. Arizona Sunrise, Asgard's Wrath 2, Batman Arkham, Metal, Hellslinger, Metro Awakening. I don't talk about it much, but you guys might know I actually like VR. I've played the first three of of those. I haven't played Hellslinger or Metro. I've been really excited for Metro though, because it looks like Half-Life Alex. but I think it comes down to Asgard's Wrath 2 and Batman Arkham Shadow. Asgard's Wrath is like PlayStation's God of War in VR, and then Batman Arkham Shadow is literally a Batman Arkham game in VR. They did such a good job. The combat is so much fun. I think I'm just gonna go Batman, but I think it could be Asgard's Wrath. Best mobile game. Finally, we can talk about this. I love Boutro. It is a poker a roguelike card game that you will not stop playing if you start it. I have not found somebody that doesn't like this game. I did my predictions for Game of the Year somewhat recently on stream. I don't want to boast my own toast, but it looked exactly like this minus Elden Ring because what the f***? And instead, I had Persona 3 Reloaded. I just didn't know about the sixth one. But it was never Bellatro. Not even in my brain did I think an indie gem in the running next to Black Myth Wook and Final Fantasy. And that's so cool. So that said, obviously, it's Bellatro. But also, I don't think Bellatro will win Game of the Year. Let's be real. It's nice that it's there. I don't think it has a chance. So it'll probably actually win this category. Oh, never mind. I, I take back everything I said. Said. It could be any of the mobile games because Belantro is going to win this category. Best debut indie game? Yeah, the one that's nominated for game of the year is probably going to be the best debut indie game. No, I don't think it's going to be Animal Well. <laughs> Who's even heard of that? Who made that even? Who published it? <laughs> Animal Well is sick. I love Animal Well. It's uh, published by Big Mode and Donkey. Best community support? Final Fantasy Online, Fortnite, No Man's Sky. Those are always in this category. I think for the sake of making a change here, here. I'm going to go for Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not even in these communities, so what do I know? Why did I even vote? Games for impact for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. I don't really have an opinion. I feel bad because I feel like all these games probably mean a lot to a lot of people. I just, I haven't played them. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to say this one. He had a whole story about how the game was based around his culture, and that actually stuck with me. Innovation and accessibility. This is stuff like if you're sensitive to certain colors or lights, you can adjust the way your visuals look in your game. Do a whole range of things to make it easier to see, hear, and interact with video games depending on your disability or however it is you like to engage with games. I love that this category gets recognition. It's one of my favorite things about the Game Awards. I just don't use any of those features, so I can't really vote. Best performance. 
Look, I almost wish there was like a little um, button I could press to hear a moment of their voice acting. I haven't played four of those games really. By default, I would guess I would have to vote for her because I really enjoyed the voice acting, but I have no idea if it was the best. I don't think this is a clear as cut as last year with Asterion. I think that one was just so obvious that he was going to win. Best audio design. The audio design is an integral part of a video game and it's very important to the overall feel and connection that you have with the game while you play. You want to have fantastic audio. That said, it's just one of the things, one of the elements of game design that I don't pay close attention to. The pitter patter of the little robot's feet on metal or the way the sword swings in Final Fantasy. Oh, I don't know if I want to commit, but Astro Bot actually does have really great sound design in the way of every level, as I said earlier, is so vastly different. And each one of those have such unique robotic audio. Instantly, I even joked about the pitter patter of the footsteps, but that was something I really enjoyed at the game. And now we're straight to best score in music, sponsored by Raycon, by the way. <laughs> this could go anyway, because even though there are some games in here that are nominated for game of the year, my little mathematic equation doesn't imply here. All of these games have fantastic music, of course, otherwise they wouldn't be here. Silent Hill aside, just because I haven't played it, Metaphor and the Persona games in general, the music are always top notch. Stellar Blade, I love that music. Such a vibe. Astro Bot, of course, has great music to go along with all the level designs and everything we talked about before, but Final Fantasy, that music. I mean, that's a soundtrack unlike any other. Zach, I want you to hit us with a little bit of Final Fantasy Rebirth. Yeah, you can't tell me that doesn't win. Best art direction. This one's really tough because it's subjective. I love the intricate armor designs and enemy designs and even the levels in Black Myth Wukong. It was so insanely detailed. Metaphor did a great job at creating a really high fantasy world. Never's obviously beautiful. And then Astro Bot. I love what they did with the skinned robots to look like all the Sony characters, but I'm gonna vote Black Myth. But uh, that's subjective. And I think all of them are beautiful in their own ways. I honestly have no real preference. Best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a video game. I haven't finished Metaphor, but I actually had issues with the storytelling and narrative. I thought the pacing was really odd. I also haven't played Silent Hill, so I think I'm leaning towards Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy still, even in Rebirth from Remake, has one of the best storytelling narratives I've generally experienced and enjoyed in a long time. It takes me forever to get through these. I honestly, I do take it quite seriously. I'm very passionate about video games and as much guff and, and jokes as I throw Jeff Keighley's way and the Game Awards way because I think it's a little bit broken and I wish I personally could have more say in this because of how much I care about this. I do think we need to have this Game Awards. I think it, what Jeff is doing, I share the vision of having the Oscars but for video games. I think it's very important because video games are in many ways a larger medium and form of entertainment now than movies and I honestly honestly don't give a shit about movies. I am all about video games. It's my one hobby. I should read books. I don't. I try to watch TV and anime when I can, but I am just so hyper-focused on playing and, and enjoying as many video game experiences as I can. And I think the industry as a whole needs to recognize how important video games are, but also how much money they're making as an industry. And having these awards, I think is a great thing. I know I joke and I goof and I gaff. I'm serious about it. I've been filming for an hour. Ugh. That said, Jeff, I hope you appreciate everything I just said because I'm about to take a steamy dump on your awards again. Best Game Direction. Astro Bot, Balatro, Black Myth Wukong, Elden Ring, Final Fantasy, Metaphor. Best Game of the Year. Say it with me once again, everybody. Astro Bot, Balatro, Black Myth Wukong, Elden Ring, Final Fantasy, Metaphor. These two categories are exactly the same. I don't understand the difference. It's got all the same games nominated. If you have the best game direction, you are the best game of the year year. And if the best game of the year didn't have the best game direction compared to one of the other games nominated, then it's not game of the year. Why have two? Why? Ha it's the same. All right, I'm going to skip game direction because it's the same thing. And we're just going to vote for game of the year. The winner is Elden Ring. As much as I love the other games that are nominated, I don't think any of them hit that 10 out of 10 that Elden Ring did. That's just how I honestly feel. And the Shadow of Tree DLC was fantastic. I think Elden Ring is going to win. However, I refuse to vote for it. I'm even willing to throw away my three-year streak 
by voting for something else. Because that's how much I, I think it's dumb that it's up to win again. Out of what's left, my favorite is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. My second favorite is Black Myth Wukong. Third favorite is Astro Bot. Fourth favorite is Metaphor. And then my fifth is Balatro. No hate to Balatro. Absolutely love it. I played all the others a lot more though. You would think that means I'm voting for Final Fantasy VII. There is one element that I've already talked about that sways that. Even though I feel like Final Fantasy is a better game, I think it is everything that has ever made video games fun. I really can't sing its praises enough. But the thing that I think makes it not game of the year is that nobody else played it. Two million copies roughly sold. Meanwhile, 20 million people played Black Myth Wukong. And I'm sure more than two million people finished Black Myth Wukong. Black Myth Wukong also saw a massive surge of sales for the PlayStation 5. Where Sony was looking to have a revenue boost around Concord, they ended up getting that revenue boost from Black Myth Wukong, a game that they didn't even publish and release. The thing is, we're talking about game of the year and what makes the biggest impact, and I think Black Myth was the game of the year. That said, why even add in the DLC stipulation unless you knew that it would just win? Maybe I'm giving Elden Ring too much credit. Maybe there's a chance Elden ring doesn't actually win and if that's the case i do think black myth is the vote this has been the worst voting experience of all the years yeah i, I haven't enjoyed i haven't enjoyed voting this year i hope there's no crazy good dlc next year that ends up in game of the year again and we can just vote for game of the year for the game that came out that year i can't get my head around it it's such a dumb decision i want to know all of your thoughts leave them all down below i'm going to watch the game awards live i think it's the 12th of december i'll be live on this channel Channel. The Game Awards not only have the announcements and the winners and we can see if I got anything right. I'm going to go take a shower. I stressed myself out. Subscribe.